Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back once again to Solid Gold. It's been a long time since I gave you guys an update on all of my fish, hasn't it? Yes, a very long time. This is a problem. We must rectify this immediately. I have tons of fish now and they're all spread out between like 10 different tanks. So I don't really want to cram that all into one video because that would just be like way too much. So I'm going to go tank by tank showing you guys the fish that are in each of my, I think, about 10 or so tanks that I have now. We're gonna start with one of my Intex kitty pools. I have kind of co-opted this for use as a fish tank instead of using it as a kitty pool, which is what it was originally intended for. And it works pretty well. They're only about $50 plus shipping, of course. Very, very cheap for how many gallons they are. I'll put a link down in the description section below. Be sure to check them out. I've had them since about October of last year, so I've had them for a little bit over a year now. I was kind of curious to see how they would hold up over time and they've held up actually surprisingly well. The only issue I've had with them is one of them got a couple little puncture holes in it because I moved. I didn't really take very many precautions to make sure that it didn't get damaged when moving. That's my bad. But it came with a, a patch kit to patch them and I was thinking like, oh, this isn't gonna work. I mean, these patch kits never work, right? But I tried it and it actually has held up for a good, what, like, seven, eight months now. I think each one holds almost 100 gallons. I try to keep them pretty minimally stocked though because I just don't like my fish being crowded whatsoever in case I'm a couple days late on a water change or something. It just gives me that extra little buffer to where they're not right at the maximum capacity and I don't have to worry quite as much. I try to do anywhere from 50 to 80% water changes on all of my tanks every week. My fish are kept in a outdoor garage which doesn't really have any heat to it. It's somewhat protected from the elements because it has walls and a ceiling and the ceiling actually is insulated but the walls aren't. Kind of weird, I know. When I went out there this morning, the water temperature was probably about 58 degrees Fahrenheit, so it gets a little chilly. And when it's cold like this, I try not to do really big water changes because first of all, I'm not feeding very much, if at all, when it's really cold like this. Well, really cold. I mean like really cold for Florida. And also the water from the faucet is a little bit warmer actually than the water is in their tank. So I try not to do any more than a 50% water change when it's colder like this. Otherwise, usually like in the summer, I do as big of a water change as I possibly can. So today we're looking at Intex pool number three. This particular one is holding six of my male butterfly telescope goldfish. I recently divided up my males and females because before I was keeping them based on color. So I would keep all the calicos in one tank, whether they were male or female, they would all go in there all the red and whites together in one tank and all the black ones together in one tank. But I haven't been having very good luck getting them to spawn and breed for me. They just won't do it at all or they'll do it when I'm gone at work. So it's really bad timing. I can't catch the eggs and make sure that they aren't eaten. I'm trying something different where I separate out the males and females. I have two male tanks right now and one female tank. I have way fewer females than I have males and that irks me. <laughs> I'm gonna need to go buy some new females pretty soon, but that's also another story. So six of my male butterfly telescopes are in here. There's of course Clyde. Clyde, as some people have called him, is the king of the fish room. He really is. He's my favorite fish. He's been my favorite fish for years. Pretty much ever since I got him, he's been my favorite fish. He is the inspiration behind that felted piece of artwork behind me right there. He used to be a panda. I got him three years ago from Dandy Randas and he was really small, really cute. He had like the perfect body shape, perfect butterfly tail, really symmetrical eyes. So of course he was instantly my favorite, but also he was a panda. So he was a uh, white base with black markings kind of over his back and then all of his fins were black. As he grew, he very slowly, gradually lost that black color and now he is just red and white with no black whatsoever. But he's still very handsome and he is still my favorite. If I had to guess, I would say he was probably only about six months old when I got him, so he's probably about three and a half years old at this point. And he's still going strong, not showing any issues whatsoever. I think that for the fancy goldfish like these, their lifespan is not quite as long as we like to say the goldfish lifespan is because they are so heavily modified and their genetics just don't really last as long as, you know, like the 10 to 15 years that we like to say the goldfish lifespan is. I think for these fancy types that are highly modified, it's actually closer to somewhere like 
five to seven years if we're being generous. So he's getting up there in age, but he's not any worse for the wear. This tank also has Luca. Luca was actually my favorite before I got Clyde, so I feel kind of bad. He's my all-white butterfly telescope, and he is not doing as well as Clyde is. Luca is about a year older than Clyde. I got him four years ago in December, and he was a little tiny guy when I first got him too, so he's probably four and a half years old at this point. He has seen better days. He's a big fish, and he doesn't swim very well. He doesn't really have any floaty issues, but he seems to have a hard time getting around. He'll spend a lot of his time on the bottom of the tank just kind of looking down, and sometimes he gets stuck in the corners of the tanks, which is another reason why I like these Intex pools, because they're not like a rigid, here's the side and here's the bottom, where they intersect, it's like a 90 degree angle. The Intex pools are actually like, they kind of bulge out on the sides, that's how they're designed. So it's more of a rounded corner instead of a sharp 90 degree corner. The bigger fish that have a hard time moving around, they tend to get stuck in the corners. They'll kind of swim until they hit the edge and then they'll keep swimming along the edge because they can't turn very well and then they'll come to a corner and then they're just like stuck in the corner for who knows how long. So that's why I like these Intex pools. I put my fish that have problems swimming in here and then it really helps them a lot because they don't have any corners to get stuck in and then they can just kind of tootle around and follow the rounded curves around the whole thing and everyone's happy. So that's Luca's story. He has a hard time getting around. He still looks really healthy. He still gets around. He just does it in his own pace and that's how he is. Then we also have Epona in this tank. I got Epona about a year ago now and I still don't know if this fish is a male or a female, but I think it's a male. This fish has never bred for me, so that's why I don't know for sure which one it is. And it doesn't have super, super obvious breeding stars that would indicate that it is a male. If you don't know what breeding stars are, there'll be a little link somewhere on the screen here that'll show you my video about breeding stars and what they are. Sometimes you can tell if it has breeding stars by fe gently feeling the leading ray of the pectoral fin, and you'll feel little bumps. Even if you don't see them, you can still feel them. So I I had this fish actually for a couple weeks now. I had it in with my female tank and then I noticed that he or she seemed to be like slightly chasing one of my females. So I picked him up. I felt the pectoral fins and there were the bumps. So I think it's a male but I'm not positive. So anyways now Epona is here in the male tank. Kind of bummed actually like really bummed about that because Epona has like a beautiful red color to him that I thought would be awesome when paired with Clyde to produce some really pretty offspring. But if they're both males, well, I guess there goes that. Then we have Mugen. He is my only remaining male butterfly telescope. My other one, Bernie, actually just passed away. All three of my calicos have some swim bladder problems off and on. But when the weather cooled down recently, Bernie's swim bladder problems got way worse. And he was stuck on the surface upside down so his belly had gone flat, which is something that I find can happen when a fish has swim bladder problems and it's either stuck at the bottom and it can't swim up or it's stuck at the surface and it can't flip, flip over right side up. They'll go flat on their belly and at that point it's kind of too late to really do anything. So he had developed a flat belly even got like a little red sore on it from where the air was touching his skin. With true swim bladder problems, there's unfortunately really nothing that you can do. The one thing that people will always say is, oh, just feed him peas. But peas will only help sometimes and only if the issue is constipation. And constipation is not true swim bladder disease. Swim bladder disease is when the swim bladder of the fish, which is a little air-filled sac inside of the fish, is deformed or malformed or just not functioning properly. No amount of feeding peas is going to help that issue, and almost nothing else helps it either. He unfortunately did get to the point where it was bad enough that I felt the best thing to do was to humanely euthanize him, so I had to do that recently. But I still have Mugen, my only remaining male butterfly that is a calico. I got him about a year ago. I got him in September of last year. He's a really beautiful calico. I love his coloring because he's kind of got like a white tail with like little specks of black throughout and it's just really pretty. He does have some swim bladder issues too off and on, but not that bad. They seem to come and go and I do think that being in this shallower 
tank does help him a little bit with that because I notice it's worse when he's in deeper water. I also have Loki. Loki is my male black butterfly telescope and I've had him for a little bit over a year as well. I remember seeing him in the Dandy Aranda's auction and he reminded me of a black butterfly telescope that I had years ago, also named Loki. So fun fact, I do sometimes recycle names that I really, really like. I love the name Loki and I wanted another fish named Loki. Gosh darn it. <laughs> he was already pretty big when I got him and ever since I did get him he has continued to grow quite a bit so he's a big fish. When I first got him both of his eyes were fairly symmetrical in size but since then one of them has kind of shrunk a little bit and that sometimes happens with butterfly telescopes. I don't know if they get like deflated or something but sometimes they do have like one eye that'll shrink a little bit while the other one stays the same just something, one of those odd things that tends to happen when you have weird fish like I do. He's the probable father to a lot of the baby butterfly telescopes that I have growing out right now. He's got one of the biggest and most beautiful butterfly tails that you'll ever find. The edges of his tail that come back up towards his head, they actually kind of flip and curl, almost like a tosakin. So he's a really pretty fish and also one of my favorites that I've had from over the years. Last but not least, there is Asha. I've had Asha for about two years now, and he is from the very first batch of butterfly telescopes that I ever bred myself. He has a really beautiful tail when viewed from above, but when viewed from the side, his peduncle is not, I don't know, it's kind of formed droopy, so instead of coming out from his body, at a nice angle, it kind of droops down and it makes his whole tail droop a lot. He's one of probably the hardiest goldfish that I have and I find that the ones that I bred myself tend to be that way. He also is really cool because he has some weird thing going on with his scales where they almost look sparkly or glittery and I've never really seen that before in another goldfish. So that's the reason that I held on to him out of that whole batch of fish that I bred because of those really distinctive scales that he had. Lately though, his eyes have just been growing out of control. Like seriously, do your eyes really need to be that big? Can we just tone it down a little bit? But yeah, he's doing great other than the huge eye thing. So that's all my fish that are in this tank. Oh, and I forgot to mention this tank is powered by air filtration. Like all the filters in my fish room, it's just one big connected loop of air powered sponge filters. I usually have two sponge filters per Intex pool, but in this one I only have one plus an air stone. I have found the best way to clean these for me is to take out two gallons of the tank water into a five gallon bucket take the sponge filter out and squeeze it out in that bucket until it's relatively clean. And technically, you're not supposed to squeeze out the porrit sponge filters because it's not good for them or something, but I haven't found another good way to clean them because just swishing them back and forth in a bucket of water won't do anything to get rid of all that buildup. And there's a lot of buildup every week in these sponge filters, so I don't really get that. I do squeeze them out and I've been doing that for I don't know, like three years now, ever since I first got these, and I haven't had any problems doing it that way. So I'm gonna keep doing it that way, because it's what works. <laughs> so yeah, that's about it. Next week, I'll show you guys my 75 gallon aquarium, and that houses my other four male butterfly telescope goldfish. So if you're not subscribed already to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below, and you will instantly get my next week's video in your subscription feed and you'll be able to watch to your heart's content. Don't forget, I have the 2017 Solid Gold calendars available for sale on my website, so head on over there and check them out and purchase your very own. I'll put a link down in the description section below where you can find these. And something new that I decided that I should do is that I should sign these. So yeah, duh, I'm gonna start signing them. <laughs> And also, if you tell me what day your birthday is, I will leave like a little happy birthday to you message on your birthday day, personally, for me to you. Also, don't forget that there is a giveaway for every calendar month. There's gonna be a giveaway. It's gonna be a drawing that I do and send right to whoever is the winner. Here's an example of one of my drawings that I did before, and that's Clyde, of course. But don't forget, you do have to fill out this little handy dandy postcard 
cut it out and send it to me. It's already addressed to my P.O. box and that will instantly enter you into all 12 giveaways. There's going to be a giveaway every month. Your postcard will be put into the drawing and I will draw a lucky winner and then I will again draw the fish that is on the calendar that month and send it to you if you win. And guess what? Your name isn't going to be taken out once you already win so you could always win again and again. And again, thanks for stopping by for another solid gold video. Until next time, stay gold. Grim's favorite thing when I'm filming is to rub his cheek on the tripod so it makes the camera shake. Grim, stop it. Grim, you just have to make sure your scent is all over it, don't you? Come up here. Come up here, Grim. That's a good spot for you. Lay down. Okay, or don't. Oh, you're gonna lay down there because that's not where I put you. You just have to pick your own spot to lay down. Fine.